What is going on guys? My name is Kote, and what I have going on right here is three, uh, yes, this is a triple header, three very, very novelty games against three very, very awesome players. Uh, these are all adherence matches, which means that all the items have to be either choice specs, scarf, or banned, and uh, this is against uh, a guy named Like the Tubes. I've battled him before. Be sure to check him out. He's an awesome guy. Uh, so he's got a Typhlosion and I have a Glaceon, so I don't really want to stick around for that because uh, that is definitely a bad situation for me. So I go to Blissey because it's a special wall and um, that's pretty much what it's for, for taking special hits. Uh, I just went for a T-Bolt because I didn't really have anything else that I wanted to do. Um, and it works out nicely because he goes into a weak-ass water type and I'm going to be able to wax that with a... <laughs> with a, with the T-Bolt. It's just, I think it's just really funny that a Specs Blissey will Oko's something. And that's awesome. So, obvious close combat is obvious. I'm going to go to Gliscor. And Gliscor is going to be able to take that thing all day long. I'm surprised he didn't predict that switch, but meh. I guess it's too early to overpredict and etc. So, Gliscor eats that. And I'm going to go for the U turn here because uh, I wanted to get switch initiative. I don't want to just fire off a hit and then have to switch out and then take a hit. So, I just went for U turn. And I thought this thing would be special, so I went to Scissor because it has pretty good natural physical bulk. But, uh,. Unfortunately, that's not the case, and he's a special one, so thank god I have max HP IVs, or EVs, rather, and um, I'm able to live that. I went for U-turn because I figured he'd be switching, and then I'd get the double switch initiative, I'd, I'd do it again, and that'd be awesome. Unfortunately, that's not the case, so I go to Zam because I'm going to resist the uh, the Aura Sphere. I th yeah, it's fighting type, right? Uh, and then I'm going to be able to hit him back with an HP Fire, but he doesn't know what HP it is yet. Uh, unfortunately for me, he knows it's not ice or anything that will hurt Zapdos whatsoever. So he's just going to be able to come in, and I expected a T-Bolt, but it turns out he just went for a U-turn, which is a good play. And, uh, he's going to get to switch out, so, uh, in comes the pincer again. So, obviously close combat's coming, but I thought going to Gliscor would be a little too obvious, he might predict that. So I'm just going to stay in and try to soft boil. Unfortunately, not the case, he does decide to just go for the kill this time, which, meh, that's alright. Uh, Blissey's not really needed that much anyways. So I go to Gengar, and Gengar was supposed to be awesome. Uh, unfortunately, I found out later that this Gengar has max attack and max special attack because I saved it wrong. And, um, yeah, so it wasn't speedy at all, and uh, I just trick a Scarf guy a Scarf, so that was totally dumb. Uh, it, was, I was, it was supposed to have specs, too, to, tr to trick it onto a physical attacker, like a Sizer. That's what I was kind of expecting to do. Didn't work out that way, no big deal. So I go to Gliscor and he U-turns and it goes into Typhlosion. I don't really have anything to take an eruption, so I'm just going to let Gliscor die. Um, yeah, because Blissey went down, so I don't have anything to take it. So I go to Zam because I'm going to be faster than Typhlosion, and I'm going to just go for Stab. Uh, Psychic is going to be able to two-hit KO the Zapdos, even if it's specially bulky, which it turns out to not be, I guess. Because it, this is a, yeah, not a lot of bulky things in, a, uh, in a, an adherence battle. Uh, so, I'm, if he's Scarfed, he's going to be faster, so I decided to switch to Gengar because uh, I didn't exactly want my Zam to go down, because, actually, I, I figured out he was Scarfed, because he yeah, I tricked him and found out that he was Scarfed, so I, de I definitely didn't want to stay in for that. And, um, uh, Sizer came in, finishes it off with a Pursuit, because I predicted him to switch, and then my Sizer is pretty much fodder at that point, because uh, it was on too low a health. Um, I go to my Zam now, and I'm going to hit him with a Psychic, because I'm faster, and that's my only real thing to take out this Typhlosion with, because it's awesome. And it's, 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 it's just a beast, it would have been able to, if, if it could have swept me if Zam wasn't faster. So, in comes the D-Knight. I'm stuck on Psychic, and I don't really have anything to switch to, because I don't really want, I don't want to have to take an unnecessary hit. And he goes for Draco Meteor, so that tells me that, well, that tells me he's probably going to switch the next turn. So, um, Zam goes down, there goes my fastest guy, but it's okay, because his fast, his Typhlosion's gone, so. Uh, I'm gonna go to Glaceon here, and I forget what his last guy was. I honestly, at this point in the battle, I forgot that he had Pinsir, so I went for Shadow Ball, because I was like, my thought process was, well, if it's, if it's a Gengar, I'll be able to one-hit KO with a Shadow Ball, and it would probably be a two with a, um... Ice Beam, so I went for Shadow Ball, and I, I was dumb, I forgot that he had Pinsir, and looking at the, I actually managed to live the close combat, which really, really surprised both of us, and I went for the Shadow Ball, and I'm kind of thinking that an Ice Beam would have one-hit KO'd with Stab and 15 extra base power, 
so that, that w it would definitely be really, really close. But anyways, that was an awesome match, Tubes, and um, yeah, that just really stinks. I wish I had, I wish I wasn't dumb like that, and uh, I went for Ice Beam. I probably would, I think I would have won unless he got like a better damage variation with the close combat and managed to k take me out. But whatever, we're just gonna move on right here. And this one, this one, I was really, really excited about. Um, uh, I waited like two days for him to make a team, and uh, this is against Penobi, who's gotten into some trouble recently, thanks to uh, MTG Xerxes. And I'm actually gonna try and talk about that after the match, because that's what I want to do. So I'm gonna do that after the match. Anyways, looking at the teams right here, you can see how similar they are, and we remarked at this again. I'm telling this kid to get out of my head because honestly, we are just we think too much alike in terms of these teams. We but first of all, we both lead with a freaking uh, fortress, and this is an ad adherence match where we're both uh, we're both stuck on whatever moves we pick. He chooses to, to set up toxic spikes, and I chose to set up stealth rocks. Uh, toxic spikes aren't a huge deal on my team, um, but. You know, meh. So I, I go to Gengar because it's going to absorb the Toxic Spikes, I think. It should. And uh, I just went for Trick, hoping that uh, to tr to um, get his Sizer in there, because I thought he'd bring a Sizer to Pursuit Trap, and then I'd be able to give it Specs, and that would have been awesome, because that would have been worth my Gengar to give his, uh, his Sizer Specs. Unfortunately, he went to Bliss, which is going to force me out, and I go to my Bliss just to show him that I have Bliss too. I go for Thunderbolt, and he wishes, and uh, then he switches out, which is, and he goes to Heatran, which actually takes a surprising amount from that T-Bolt. Um, I guess I didn't absorb the Toxic Spice, I guess I guess because he levitates? I don't know. I'm not really sure how that mechanic works. Uh, so, Heatran isn't still too threatening to Blissey, so I'm just going to stick around and hit him with another T-Bolt, maybe I'll get a Paralyze. Who knows, because he's probably Scarfed, because that, most Heatrans are, are Scarfed, so... Um, because of the poison, Blissey can't exactly stick around, and uh, she's going to switch out as he brings in a T-Tar. I went back in my Gengar, and I'm stuck, because he's got Pursuit, I know it, and um, there's not really a whole lot I could do. I could go for a... I guess I could have went for a Shadow Ball, it wouldn't have done too much. Sludge Bomb probably did about the same, so... Uh, plus it had the chance of poison, so... You know what? Uh, I was screwed anyways, which, um, you know, there we go. So his t is in here looking something fierce. I can't bring Bliss in because he's physical. And uh, so I bring in Sizer because I have Bullet Punch. I can do a lot of things. Uh, I go for a U-turn because it's super effective anyways. And if he wants to switch, it gives me switch initiative, which is always good. So I go to my Glaceon here because Glaceon has ice and it's special and Gliscor is a physical wall. And uh, he's got a switch. So I'm going to fake him out here with a double switch and go back into my Sizer. And he goes into Heatran, so my great play is wasted, but because he's got a faster guy with a fire attack, which is times four effective, so I'm not going to stick around there too much. Uh, I go to Blissey, and he hits me with a fire blast. Uh, he never misses a fire blast in this game, which kind of annoyed me at the time, but then I thought, well, you know, it's kind of not supposed to miss. So, uh, Blissey is getting hit a lot right here, and I thought he'd go for another fire blast. Uh, I'm just gonna stay in a soft world because I, 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 this is the point where I realize that my team is really, really, really fire weak. Like uh, I've got Glaceon, I've got Sizer, I've got Fortress. Um, yeah, so that Scarf T-Train is definitely public enemy number one. Uh, but unfortunately for me, I'm not really sure what his Bliss wants to do. I guess he could pass a wish to himself. I'm not really sure, but it turns out his Blissey has Fire Blast too, so now I'm like, great, now I'm kind of stuck here, because I can't go to Sizer, which is what I guess he was predicting by going for Fire Blast. Um, I can't exactly stay in because I am toxic, and Sandstorm, and no lefties, and that equals a bad time. Uh, so I know he's locked on Fire Blast, and he's getting worn down by the Sandstorm, but n not at a good rate. I have to switch here. I was kind of really afraid of him staying in Fire Blasting, but then again, it's a Blissey, and it's not really going to do too, too much. So I go to my only thing that isn't times four weak to it, uh, my Alakazam. So Zam's going to be faster than this Gliscor, unless it's Scarfs, and uh, it's just going to be able to stay in and kill it. And uh, I really should have seen this coming. Uh, I am a I did manage to take out the Gliscor. That crit did not matter. Uh, but I should have known better. I should have known that I have to take out his T-Tar first because that's what he's going to bring in, and I'm stuck. 
Um, staying in and hitting it is probably the better play, but I thought maybe he'd predict me to stay in and he'd go for a crunch or something, or like a stone edge, but nope. Um, Zan goes down, and that is horrible. Uh, and right here, I walked, I had to go away for about half an hour because I had to get a suit fitted. So, uh, really, really big thanks to him for sticking around. I went for X Scissor because it would have been super effective against that thing, and I, I don't think I've seen all his guys yet, so I'm not really sure what he's got stick, sticking around. Uh, obviously that uh, fortress does have Earthquake, which would have killed the Heatran for sure, but meh. Uh, so now Blissey comes in, and Blissey uh, is my only thing that can take fire. Um, so he's got his rocks up now, which really sucks, because that just matches my rocks. And now Blissey's forced to soft boil again. Um, uh, so obviously Pursuit is obvious, but I kind of have to switch, I can't stick around. I can't hit I I can't hit him because I'm stuck on soft boiled, so uh, I'm gonna have to leave eventually. So I may as well leave when I'm at as much HP as I'm going to get. And um, unfortunately for me, his T tar is banded. I think yes, it was banded, and uh, that's gonna take me out. I'm not sure if it would have taken me out if it wasn't banded, but uh, that's three guys that that T tar is taken out, and that is not good. Uh, man, that really sucks. Um, so I, I pretty much go to Fortress because it's my only thing that can really hurt this thing. Like, size or Bullet Punch, yeah, but... Um, he's still got Heatran kicking around, which is going to times 4 resist it, and it's going to be able to kill something with Fire Blast. Be it the Sizor or this Fortress, who knows. Uh, so he's going to go to Heatran now, knowing he's faster, and he's going to go for a Fire Blast here. It's going to take out my Fortress that it is going to hit, which really sucks for me. I, needed, I just needed one miss. I just needed one out of the four or five chances, but, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't beg for hacks, I, uh, I think I've, I think I've said that before. Anyways, in comes Glaceon, Ice Beam can't really do too much to anything, uh, so I just went for Shadow Ball, I, I do believe, uh, yes I did, and he's still got Fortress, and I thought this would do more, because Fortress is not very especially bulky, even though it is resisted, I thought that would do more, but apparently not. So, I'm just going to stick around because this Glaceon's pretty much useless. Um, he's going to hit me with a Rapid Spin, which is something that I thought about, but then I thought, nah, he probably won't bring entries. I thought I was being in innovative, but um, we'll talk about that later. Uh, so, now I go to Sizer, I guess I'm going to try and salvage my Glaceon. This, these are my last two guys, by the way. Uh, so, Sizer, um, I can't superpower because he's, his Heatran is Scarfed. And uh, I need to go. I need to at least go first every time. So I'm gonna go for bullet punches. And uh, this is surprising. This bullet, this choice banded stab technician bullet punch is going to three hit KO a half health uh, fortress, or four hit KO, which is just insane. He's gonna get two dryer balls off Omni, but honestly, uh, that's nothing. So one more one more bullet punch after this. He lives with like a sliver of health, which is kind of a running gag around uh, me and Panobi. Uh, I always just leave him at like a sliver of health and uh, then get wrecked. But um, you know that's just that's just luck and that's just his team's being awesome. So uh, Fortress goes down and it's three on two. Unfortunately, he has a sizer as well, so I'm never going to win this mirror match because he can resist my bullet punch, hit me with superpower, and um, because of the defense drop right here, I tell him if I get a crit, I'm gonna win. Um, and I actually managed to live, so I tell him, like, if I get a critical hit, bullet punch, it's going to do double damage, what it did the first time, and I'm going to win. So he decides to <laughs> wussy out here and go to the Blissey, which I told him, man, that's not fair. Give me a chance. But, uh, you know, he goes ruthless. I think I've mentioned this before. This, I sound like a broken record. Jesus. Uh, and because rocks are gone, he's going to be able to come back in and uh, finish me off with a bullet punch after I hit him with my bullet punch, and I'm hoping for a crit. I don't get a crit. Uh, Bullet Punch finishes me off, and Glaceon, I think, dies to, to Stealth Rock, but I honestly thought it wouldn't. So, once again, we remarked at how similar our teams were. We both bought a, brought a Fori, a Bliss, and a Sizer, and then I just had three other special sweepers, and, uh, I forget what he had. He had a T-Tar, a Heatran, and a Gliscor. And his Gliscor, he told me after the match, was friggin' amazing. It had Fling, and then it had Toxic Salt. So... I thought, I thought that was just amazing, because that's that's a totally an interesting um, uh, way to view this match. Like, not as accept the fact that you're stuck with the choice item, but throw it at the other guy. Like, I never even thought of that, and I'm really kind of jealous, because that was an awesome, awesome idea. Unfortunately, he never got to use it, because I just had perfect checks for him, but whatever. 
And uh, now we're going to cruise into the third of this triple header. Uh, so far I'm 0 for 2, so let's see if I can do a little bit better against gold over here. And looking at his team, his team looks pretty formidable. He's got... He's, he actually has a bunch of UUs, and even an NFE, he's only got one OU, so... Things could go well. This is using kind of like an intermediate, like between... Like after the battle with tubes and before the battle with Penobi, like just the guys that I'm using. Uh, so he U-turns right off the bat on my fortress. Uh, I just set up my stealth rocks because that's what I want to do. And thank God because that Pidgeot is a flying type that's going to take a quarter damage coming back in. And that's awesome. Uh, predicting flamethrower or fire blast or something, I go to Blissey and uh, Blissey eats that all day. Uh, he goes into an Azumarill, and obviously, like, it could superpower, it could do a lot of things, but fortunately for me, I decided to T-Bolt rather than Ice Beam, because I knew he would switch out of that stupid dragon air. And uh, the T-Bolt actually gets a Paralyze on the Azumarill, which is pretty freaking cool. Uh, I decided to switch out, predicting him to switch, which is turns out to be an awesome play, and he goes into Raichu. I forget what that thing's ability is, but thank god I didn't stay in T-Bolt, because I'm pretty sure it would have gotten a boost of some sort. I forget. I honestly don't even know. Uh, Sizor just goes for a U-turn. I could have bullet punched, but that would have been resisted. Uh, and U-turn actually manages to take it out, which is pretty freaking sweet, because now I get a switch. He goes down, and that's where we are. I've got Gengar in there, which is pretty good. Um, uh, Zoomerail's going to hit me with an Aqua Jet and then bite the dust after I hit it with some kind of ghost move or poison move. I sludge bomb it, because that is stab, and it is awesome. Uh, I wish I didn't have to take that hit, but meh, I knew I could live. So he goes into a dragon now, which is going to resist it, and I'm going into Fortress, and he predicts that and goes for Fire Blast, and this is where the whole thing starts going downhill. I was playing so well up until this point, uh, and then I just I managed to throw it all away here. I should have went to Blissey, knowing he's, phys he's special, but meh, I didn't. So now I go to Blissey now, and uh, I could T-Bolt, I could Ice Beam, or I could Flamethrower. And I went for Ice Beam, predicting him to stay in, because I'm dumb as hell. I could went for T-Bolt, and uh, it probably would have done the same as that crit, so that crit probably would have taken out the Infernape. Obviously I can't stay in in close combat, so I go to Gengar, and he makes a good play in U-turns. Uh, which would have done mega damage to Blissey, but I times 4 resist it with Gengar. Uh, in comes the stupid uh, Dragonair, and it turns out he's Scarfed. I thought he was Specs the whole time, because I switched out the Scarf for Specs on this Gengar, trying to cripple things. And uh, now I'm in deep crap. I go to Sizer, hit it with Bullet Punch, and thankfully it takes it out before he uh, is able to hit me with another Outrage. And in comes the Pidgeot. Now right here, uh, I thought this would KO. Bullet Punch, Stab, Technician, all that jazz. Uh, choice Banded, it doesn't, it, it can't do three quarters to a Pidgeot, and he manages to Brave Bird me. And like now things are down, th things have gone down the drain. I'm not sure I'm going to win anymore when before I would have said that I could win this with my hands behind my back because I don't have that priority move in Bullet Punch anymore. So Glaceon comes in and I Scarf, but apparently he's he is too. He's going to hit me with close combat and my, since my Gengar's dead I can't dodge it. Um, so I definitely let way too many guys die. I can't go to Blissey so I have to go to Zam. And right here, I don't know what his sixth guy is so I just went for Stab Psychic because it would have been super effective on him. And on his Infernape, and uh, I didn't know what was coming in, so I wanted to damage as much as possible. And right here, he makes a fantastic play, and he predicts my switch to Blissey, and he goes to Infernape, and that gives him the turn of initiative. That gives him the switch advantage. He managed to fight all the way back, which is an awesome, awesome, awesome feat by him. I definitely did not see any of this coming, and uh, uh, right now, Blissey's got to take a hit for Zam because <laughs> uh, it's 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 getting dicey. So, I'm asking him what his item is, and he says he's Specs, and since I'm Specs too, that means it's a speed tie. Uh, so, I'm going to live this close combat, uh, be just fine with it, and um, it's going to come down to a speed tie. So, here we go, guys. Uh, after I Shadow Ball his, his Infernape, uh, his Alex Am's going to come in, and whoever wins this coin flip chance is going to win the battle. After I was up the whole time, he clawed back, and he wins. Uh, he manages to Psychic me with his specs, and um, that's going to be enough to finish me off. So, I was up the entire time, and I let it slip away, and that, like, <laughs> don't... Uh, and he made some fantastic plays, so don't take anything away from him. He made incredible, incredible plays, and uh, managed to beat me out, which was... 
which really surprised me. Um, so, I think I mentioned this earlier, but I kind of want to talk about some of the stuff that's been going on recently. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this video from Xerxes. Um, I'll probably link it in the, in the description, but he really calls out a lot of people. He calls out Shofu, uh, Flaming Spade, uh, all these people for being in a chat where apparently the acoustic kind, Scott, Panobi, uh, revealed, uh, as Xerxes claims, all of his team for this mega series that he's going to be doing and he's getting everybody super hyped about. But uh, talking to Scott myself um, a couple days ago, um, turn, like he's, he claims that... Um, uh, that he only talked about one or two of his guys, uh, the Z be them being the Zapdos and Ablissi, and he didn't even mention their moves, moves that's he only mentioned HP Grass on the Zapdos. So, uh, I trust Scott, Scott's a great guy, so, um, I'm definitely gonna go with his story here, because Xerxes, seem it seems like he's kind of trying to rally the troops. Uh, like his heartfelt speech at the end, it, it seems like he's trying to uh, how do I put this? Crap. It seems like he's trying to gather everybody behind him and try to go for one kind of final push against Pokemon. I know we apologize and yada yada, but I think that was kind of just like, oh look, I'm sorry about that, all that stuff. And then he's trying, he's just trying to get people on his side for whatever reason. I'm not sure why, but um, where the hell am I going with this? It seems like he's trying to get everybody on his side. So I mentioned that. Okay. Uh, and he, this entire, the entire hour-long video that he posted yesterday was kind of dictatorial, I thought. Uh, a lot of the things that he said didn't need to be say, didn't, a lot of the things he said didn't need to be said, they could have been done private. He didn't have to attack, uh, Scott, he didn't have to attack Shofu, uh, he didn't have to attack Wild, for that matter. Uh, I think Wild got the worst of it, um, but... Oh, where am I going with this? I think he's trying to uh, use the fact that he trains and he does everything the old-fashioned way uh, and take advantage of that and just bash everybody who uses save because it's easier. Uh, most of the time when something's easier, it's probably the more efficient and effective way. He says that... He, he does the whole... Anim I think he's been watching too much anime because he talks about, like, fighting spirit and how... People who train their teams better know their teams better, but I completely, I could not disagree more. Um, like, uh, people who, who save have just, they have just as much uh, knowledge of their team as people who train. I'm not really sure what his thought process there is there. Don't get me wrong, I still love the guy, I still, I'm still, this is not going to stop me from watching his stuff, but it seems like he's trying to kind of get people on his side, I'm not sure why, but, um, yeah, definitely some, uh, some stuff that is going down that doesn't need to go down, but, you know, whatever. Um, I'm just kind of bringing... The, I'm not sure if all of you have heard of this. This, this is fairly recent. And uh, I just want to let you know that I'm on... Uh, I'm kind of on the new... The new... Uh, I'm... Hmm. I sound like an idiot right now. I'm kind of on the side with, like, the acoustic kind. I'm on, I'm on his team. I'm on Scott's team through all this, because, uh, that, that, that's the forward direction, um, Xerxes is kind of backwards thinking here, I'm not really sure what he's trying to go for, he's trying to just get, he's trying to take advantage of the fact that he's old-fashioned and trying to get people to, he's indirectly getting people to hate the mosh pit by saying, oh, well, I, I apologize for all the things I've said in the past, but I think you guys are still retarded, but, because that's pretty much what he's doing. He's taking the naivety of his fan base and um, kind of applying it, uh, trying to just generate all this hate that doesn't need to go down. Because this could have, like, honestly, everything in that video that had to be dealt with, like, obviously Scott shouldn't have talked about his Blissey and his Zapdos, but Xer Xerxes didn't have to cancel battles with people just because they knew two of his guys. I think he's he's just blowing everything out of proportion. He's trying to make himself seem like the bigger man, when in this case he's acting like a child, I think, but... Whatever, I'm just going to move on from all this, and uh, I just wanted to bring that to some of your attention who may not have seen it, and kind of give my opinion on it. So I'm on Team Scott, um, but that doesn't mean I hate people who are on Team Xerxes. Uh, I just think that a lot of those people are just naive, and um, 
they just listen to anything that Xerxes spews out. So uh, I definitely recommend that you form your own opinion, though. Uh, I do not recommend that you just take what I say at face value. I definitely want you to delve deeper and um, think for yourselves, guys. Learn to learn to not just accept things. Learn to learn like think for yourself and be your own person. That's kind of something I've always enjoyed. Just being who you got to be, etc., etc., etc. So um, I'm not really sure why I got gay voice there, but. Whatever, I will see you all later when hopefully all this is blown over because I'm taking a break for a few days. Maybe a week, who knows. See you later.